On this episode, we're going to dig deep. We're going to talk about self-worth. We're going to uncover some stuff that I know might be a little tough, but I really believe is going to add value to your life today if you fucking listen to us. Yeah. A little yeah, bit. Re real simple. It's all the things you don't want to hear. Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about all the things you, you that you don't want to hear. You're going to want to turn it off. But the irony is there are all the things you need to hear. Yep. And you shouldn't turn off. So it's up to you. Uh, I've said this many times, um, whether you want to be a pussy or not. But um, <laughs> if you want to make some substantive changes, this yep. is the episode for you or para tu. I believe that's <laughs> uh, Spanish. Does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to the show. <laughs> What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Business and Biceps. And you better wake your ass up, because on today's show, we're going to talk about self-worth. We're going to talk about evaluating it. We're going to talk about increasing it. We're going to talk about, I don't know, just this conversation in general. It keeps kind of popping up, Fosco. And I yeah. think, you know, we're going to give uh, we're going to give some deep, thought-provoking um, stuff here, like we always do, JR15. Yeah, for, for <laughs> sure. I, listen... <laughs> Like uh, when we're talking about something serious like <clears throat> self-worth, right? I don't think anybody should feel like they have to uh, earn that. I think everybody should inherently grant them themselves that, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, I, I think a lot of, I think a lot of bad family situations um, and bad situations in life make people question that. And I, th I don't think that's the individual being fair to the individual, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think self-worth, um, and I don't want to get too, too deep, too quick needs to be earned. You know what I'm saying? I think it should be, it should be owned and sure you want to, of course you want to be aggressive in your life and you want to try to do things, but, um, being successful or not being successful, I don't think should threaten your self-worth because then, um, you're really playing with fire. You're really giving yourself a reward system of I'm only worth, you know, something if I do something. Well, what, what if, what if you don't, what if you're just like, um, a regular person with a regular life, which is totally like, you're not good enough. You know what I'm saying? You're almost setting yourself up for, 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 for damage. That that's actually kind of exactly, I'm mm -hmm. glad you kind of went there out the gate, Johnny, because that's what I was going to kind of bring up the question of is like, you know, what is really the system that people either, uh, get, get their self-worth from and it, and it, sometimes it is from family members treating them a certain way or them thinking what they have to accomplish so they can feel like they're worth a certain thing. And like, it's really not about any of those things. No, no, but that's, but that's what right now it's, it's made that it's about. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's all about the reward system. Right. So the way you were brought up, the way your parents, the way your brother, sister, whoever it may be, uh, your family rewarded you. They, family systems reward behavior. Yep. So when they reward certain behavior and it could be completely unhealthy behavior. But, you know, let's say if your dad, you know, uh, is proud of you as a uh, as a boy for going and beating up other kids because you know you're being a man if you will standing up for yourself that's rewarding completely uh unhealthy behavior but you're you're gonna feel some sort of self-worth as at least as a kid because you know your dad's saying you're doing the right thing well you're fucking not doing the right thing so yeah. i think i think there has to be a process when like we mature that we have to have like this internal fucking compass right where, where we can no, without anyone else telling us like what is good enough. And, and the answer always is, and this may sound cheesy, is that we are good enough. We are good enough. We don't need to earn. We don't need to earn the feeling of being worth anything. You don't have to earn. There's many things in life you have to earn. You yeah. do not need to earn that. And if you feel you need to earn that, you are in for some fucking pain. And yeah. and, and I, I don't want to speak like um, a lot of people don't think that way because a lot of people do. And I think that's why we're talking about it right now. Yeah. But if if I could pound any anything in anyone's head is 
you do not need to earn that. And you need to start listening to yourself um, and taking care of yourself um, mentally, physically, and, and, and all that stuff. And stop, stop basing your reward system on other people. I mean, because if you really think about it, Johnny, most people's, I would say, reward system, essentially what you kind of said, or their self-worth is based on someone else's opinion that's essentially their parents, mostly, I would say, that they can't choose anyway. No. <laughs> so so like, if you really don't, th this is, this is going to sound probably mean, but if you really don't want to be like your parents, meaning whether it's the way they operate, maybe how they like their job, maybe their financial, whatever it is. If you don't really, you might not, I'm not saying you dislike them. I'm just saying if you don't really want to maybe operate like them, but they're the ones that are saying you have to meet these certain guidelines or you're worthless, like that, that system is all upside down the, the way I try to like make sense of it. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, man. I mean, I think we need to, again, identify the fact that I believe all of our parents, at least most of them, they try the best they can for sure to do the best they can. Are they perfect? Are they flawless? Absolutely not. Do they make mistakes? Fuck. Yes, they do. So like, here's an example of something that's extremely common in many families that is so damaging, uh, so fucking damaging is a lot of parents, whether it be consciously or subconsciously, they will play one sibling off the other. They will play. I've seen it in my family where like he's he's the favorite son. He went to this school. Why can't you be more like him? Why? And, and, and what that does <clears throat> to another sibling is it completely decimates, you know, it completely decimates their confidence. It completely decimates their self-worth. And they need to get to a point where they figure out I, I am you know, I am, I am good enough. I'm yeah. fucking good enough. And here's why. And, and that is kind of what, to me, what you, what you said, like separating from the ideals and the words of your parents and realizing that they're just people and, and, yeah. and, and they, they made a mistake and, and you need to, you need to figure out uh, that for yourself. Yeah. Because you have to live outside of whatever their ideals are because it's not maybe that has influence but it doesn't mean it's your ideals you're a whole different person you just happen to be birthed from these people i mean that's i mean they're not like a lot of parents weren't meant to be on a pedestal even though they are think, yeah, anyone think, is right I don't think any anyone is, is supposed to be on a pedestal but you know we're raised a certain way and most people want their dad proud of them their mom proud of them sure be, because those are the people that you know supposed to or did love them you know so that's normal but we just have to understand that that these people fucking make mistakes and and we pay for them and 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 there comes this time in in, in your life if you actually are into figuring this shit out where it's like you could have a mother you love shit i you know i'll, I'll use my mom as an example and everyone knows i <clears throat> my feelings about her um great relationship with my mom amazing but I've had to get mad at her for certain things she did um, in my life, especially when I was younger, um, a handful of times. And my mom to me is as close as perfect, too perfect as it gets, but she still fucking made mistakes. And it was crucial. It was crucial for my self-worth that I called her on it yeah. because when I called her on it, she had the ability to reflect on it. And as long as I'm talking about it in a respectful way and I'm not attacking, I'm actually trying to let her understand how that made me feel like that little wound. If that person is willing to hear from you, like it, it gets healed, yeah. but it does not get healed if you are not courageous enough. And yet I'm, I'm, I'm using the word courageous because you have to be courageous to go to your parents and talk about these things. If you're not courageous enough to go to them, that wound is not going to heal. But here's what's going to happen. The wound and the pain is just simply going to get put into the wrong fucking cabinet. Yeah. So you're going to put that pain on your son. You're going to put that pain on your wife. You're going to put that pain on your... It's going to go somewhere when it belongs on the person who created it. You know, these are all- It gets displaced just because it has to go somewhere, absolutely right? Absolutely. And it yeah. doesn't stop. The only way to stop it 
is to put it where it belongs, get closure, hear what you need to hear, and then it's clean. It's like clean, but but it will go on for fucking 20, 30. It'll go on for a lifetime if you never do it. But yeah. you have to put it in its right place. I remember um, as I got a little older, probably like right when I was between, between 15 and 17, like, you know, the high school years where I started really thinking for myself, I remember saying certain things to my mom that like I was pissed about. And she used to always like say like, yo, like you didn't come with a handbook and our situation is not perfect. And I've made a ton of like she used to never like dodge it. Like when I would come at her probably more, you know, like a hot head, 15 year old, you know what I'm saying? Like with no dad around. So I was probably a little bit unruly. She would just straight tell me that like, and, and even though I was young, I, I would still like respect that she wasn't saying that she had all the answers. She told me, no, I know that this, you know, is upsetting you. And I'm, you know, I didn't, you didn't come with a fucking manual and this yeah. situation that we were put in, whether it's, you know, blaming it on your dad or blaming it on the market or whatever the situation was like, I'm, she would literally just say, I am doing my best to survive Corey. Like, because you ain't got the fucking shoes that the next guy got isn't one of my concerns right now. You know, when you're 14 or 15, you don't, you're not thinking like an adult. You're right. thinking like a, a child, you're immature. You're, and I just remember being, and this is part of why I became me and why I wanted to, you know, create success and do these type of things is because I was so mad, not just because of material things, but just the way we were operating. It was, it was, I was angry about it, which produced this person that is today. But I just remember her never acting like, she had it all figured out. Actually, she was very humble and saying like, I think I'm fucking some of this stuff up, but you know, certain things we're going to stick to and this is just what it is. And <laughs> basically, I'm sorry and figure it out. I mean, and I couldn't really fault her for that. <laughs> At least she was it, honest. <laughs> here, here's the thing though, like just, just hearing you talk about it, right? You said, you know, dad, dad wasn't really, really around. You know, I, I come from obviously divorced background as well. So I guess my question to you is, hearing that and talking about self-worth and and all these you know scars we may have from our past sure was it really your mom that that taught you this stuff because your mom sounded like she was being straight with you now she was I, I i would assume the issues the potential self-worth issues the potential questions could fr be from dad not being around no no question johnny and and also he didn't really he couldn't really art one I probably wasn't aware of what to try to pull out of him or ask him about You're a kid. That's, that's not your responsibility. Yeah. Right. And and we've talked about that before. That's part of, but it was like, I think that it's one of those things where, you know, you replay things in your mind and you're, I wish I would have asked certain things or done certain stuff and I could have understood it better. But yeah, of course, I think that's where it has to come from because when somebody's absent in your life, even to some degree, and on top of it, my dad was kind of a loner. So he, even when he was around, he was kind of absent and I see, you know, and I see pieces of that in myself. I've talked about it many times here and I try to, I try to like check it when it's there. Like, wait a second, this is what used to happen to you. Like, why are you doing this? And mine's not even near as severe. His was probably at a point where he probably needed medication, but it is absolutely. That's where I think that the stuff would come from. Cause mom, you could tell was just giving it everything she got for yeah. what she had. And she right. was honest about it and understood. And I think that as a man, right, you think that you, especially, I mean, you want your dad to be the provider, the tough guy, the guy that can protect you. And then when that's kind of absent a little bit and you might not view him that way, it, it, it definitely makes you grow up a little earlier, I think. Um, and I never really felt like I was less than, I feel like I wanted more though. I don't really know how to maybe articulate it all the way. I never really felt like I wasn't like, um, I never felt like a really terrible self-worth personally, but I just felt like the value. Well, I'm sure um, you felt like you questioned whether or not he loved you. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting about him is that he would express that it just wasn't maybe how you wanted it to. And, and look, no one, once again, they're people, they're never going to probably live up to the way you want them to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure many times you're like, man, I wish my old man would really do it this way, but that's just not how they operate. So he never, he wasn't a dad that never said he loved me. So I'll give him that. That was one of the things that like, we were around each other and we would, you know, be done. I, I definitely knew that he cared about us and say, my sister will say the same thing, but it was never 
probably as, um, and that's probably why I'm overly like that. My, I tell my kids, I love them twice a day, you know, even after I fucking yell at them like a maniac because of something they're doing wrong. So, you know, once again, these all shaped in this, this is why I wanted to be a dad Fosco. That's why, um, I wanted to be a parent so bad. I wanted the opportunity to fix some of those things, or at least give a chance, maybe not fix it, do it differently. Cause I always tell Rachel, (laughs) there's a percentage that we're going to fuck up and we are fucking up. I already know it, but that's just part of life. You just have to be okay with that. I'm just trying to make sure my percentage and I'm more aware of it as a parent yeah. that there's going to be issues that they've I've created because of the way I operate. There's no question. I already know that's that's just undeniable though. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I think in general what a lot of people do, is, and this is fucking easy as shit to do, is it's easy to understand why, right? Like why your dad acted this way, why Mm -hmm. my dad acted this way. And then because it's not comfortable and we don't want to hold them accountable and or be angry at them for the things they done. And uh, and I'll say a million times, uh, there's nothing healthier than, than actually taking uh, some time to be angry at your parents because sure. if you denied that yeah. you're, you're you're being a faker you're 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 faking it. So just because you understand why your mom did this or did that or why your dad, it doesn't excuse the fucking act. It's just like any other person. If you understand why they stole a car right? They're out yeah. of a job. It doesn't excuse the act in the, in the eyes of the law, there's accountability it goes for your parents too, man. So we can all say, we know, Oh, my dad had it tough or it doesn't fucking matter because I had it tough. You had it tough, yeah. but I'll never use that excuse. It's I will never excuse. use my fucking, uh, previous crutches as a reason as, to justify my, out of line behavior. So as children, don't do that to your brother, your sister, your father, your mother. Do not do that. That's your problem. That's most people's problem. They understand why it doesn't fucking matter. They still did it. Hold them accountable, talk to them and then fucking move on. And then guess what? If they don't fucking accept it, if they don't accept it, you got to make a decision. Are you going to keep prostituting your feelings or are you going to fucking, you know, be a man or a woman? Yeah. And I think about like, um, I forget, I had heard some like rationalizations in the past about when my dad was spending all the money on the lottery or maybe he really thought that was his way out. I don't know. I never really had like a, never had really an adult that in and of itself, right? Like if he really thought that was his way out, that's kind of my point. That's where I'm going. (laughs) Like, 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 come on, on. you you got a kid to take care of, bro. Exactly. And so that's my point. Like I could never, no matter what was said that was based around that, like you said, Johnny, I could never get past that. That's during times of financial hardship that was still happening at that level. But that's a true, like gambling addiction is what it was. And I didn't understand that because I was so young. Right. But in Hebrew, I don't even know if he understood it either way. Like I said, these are things that like way past removed. He's been gone for 10 years. It would be amazing as an older person to be able to have like real conversations like that. I I won't get a chance to, but you know, when I reflect back on those things, once again, they're all things that shape me to change. But I always wonder like, why were you making that? Like, were you that financially irresponsible or had that lack of a financial IQ that that's what you thought was really going to get us out of the situation playing the fucking pick three? I mean, like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like that, that shit used to drive. It drove me crazy. And I knew I should have checked. Like I obviously shared how I felt. We talked about that on another podcast and that was really, um, you know, helpful, but these little intricate things, as I got older, I wish I could have went deeper with him and understood why did you think that was okay to, you can't bear, we can barely pay the electric bill, but you're playing to pick four. I, I don't understand. I don't it's cause understand. it's cause it's cause, it's cause, it, cause it, it, here it wasn't okay. And it's cause he had a problem. Cor- correct. And, and maybe the, un- it doesn't matter aware. what he's going to say. So, so like if I, yeah, it's dad, true. Yeah. If I ask my dad, why'd you do this? Why it, it doesn't fucking matter. Right. It doesn't Did matter. People try to it rationalize. I know that this is something you've mentioned, but I don't know if we t- like, have people tried to rationalize what your father did from an abuse standpoint, Johnny, to still make it okay to be around them? 
Ah, uh, it's a it's a it's a mixed bag, bro. It's a it's a mixed bag of deniers. No, yeah. that it, that didn't happen. It's a mixed bag of I didn't see it, so it didn't happen. It's a mixed bag of you know we're not going to talk about it. So you know gotcha. it's it's one of those things where you know out of sight, out of mind to most people, and, and and though and that's what I'm talking about, right? Like so, I could think about so many family members who as a man now, I, I'm really disappointed in because they essentially were cowards, right? In their time to step up and say, oh shit, okay, this and this happened. Ooh, yeah. um, they, they didn't, they, they were cowards. And uh, to even think about reversing the roles and having you know younger family members that probably look up to me and... Um, and, and being a coward, uh, it, it's unexcusable. But you know what? It, it it's common. It's common. And and I think that that's kind of part of the point of this show is that our man. This is horrible to say it, but I say it off all the time. When you can almost eliminate expectations of people, I don't want to say expect the worst, but almost elim like not expect anything from anyone because then then what happens is when someone hurts you or doesn't yep. step up you know it's almost like fucking a that's life but when then someone when someone does right if someone um like uh, i had an aunt who, who 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 did deal with the reality when someone is heroic like that and, and will do something that the family won't you really do say okay uh, like that's that's who i want to be like yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um I think we we need to we need to understand that everybody listening right now probably has some fucking shit that they got to handle. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and and I promise you, if you're married, if you have a girlfriend, you are acting out the shit right now. You are that you have not taken care of and you're putting it on somebody that doesn't deserve it. So if that is not a call to action, you are a coward. Yeah. The, um, I was, as you were talking, I was just thinking about back to like the, the baseline of where like the self-worth kind of stuff starts. And it's like, you almost wish that when, uh, people pop out or when they become, you know, start to think for themselves that there is, uh, it's almost like a video game that it's at a hundred percent, right. That you just feel a certain way that it's not, um, you know, impacted by all of these extra things that you really can't control, especially as a kid. But the reality is it's not like that. So it's like, what, what's the, what's the advice on sifting through? I mean, you've been through some hardship, Johnny, like sifting through all of this stuff that could easily make you feel like you're 10% of a hundred. And yeah. then, and then, and then go up against the social media and go up against, the uncle that didn't fucking do anything and you'd like to fucking punch in the mouth and then go up against, you know, what your parents think you should do and go up against why you're not rich. Cause you're 23 and you ain't there yet. Like, dude, when I start to like say all that stuff out loud, this is what motherfuckers are dealing with. And then they feel like they're, they're worthless, which, yeah. and I, I, I gotta say, and I don't know if it's the time it's the pre-social media it's, I don't know. It was lifting. I, I don't know what it was. I, I can honestly say I don't really believe I ever felt that to that level. I think I always felt like I, I had this uh, crazy push to want better overall, but yeah. I don't know that it was, I think within uncovering that I made myself feel better, you know, but I don't know that I was doing it like knowingly. It, it, yeah. So none of this was like, uh, I guess on purpose because I felt worthless. You know what I'm saying? It, it kind of happened. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I can't, from a depression standpoint, I can't really relate as much either. Uh, I never really felt, uh, real, real depression. Um, well, here's what I can say is like, it's, it's hard cause we're fighting. Let's say if we have children like, like yourself, we're fighting, uh, nature and like, you can never beat nature. And I believe nature right now is the integration of uh, the massive integration of technology into life. So imagine, and I can't imagine because I didn't go through it, growing up, you know, from your earliest memories, you know, doing things on the iPad to chatting with people on your phone. And then all of a sudden you get to this point in life where it's time to have a career. And 
you have to deal with people. That is so, that atmosphere, that whatever it is, is so different than you've spent your whole life doing yeah. because you've spent your whole life making friends with a picture on a screen as opposed to making friends outside at the park. And I don't know. I don't know what that does to somebody. But all I know is it has to feel like you're stepping into a different world with aliens. You know what I'm saying? And these aliens breathe, they speak, they talk, they walk, and you can't rely. You know, what's we we talked we were talking about this on the phone uh the other day. What's everybody, almost everybody, especially the younger generations, first instinct when they get a second of break from anything to check their cell phone? Yeah. It, I it, see it, it every day at my house. Correct. It's unreal. It, it's like a it is an addiction, right? It's like a crackhead. Sure. So, so take that away from somebody, and they can, so that's that, that. Essentially, when you have an addiction, that what you're doing is you're comforting yourself. So, when you grab that phone, that's your that's your comfort. When there's in in your opinion awkwardness or a feeling of uneasiness, yeah, go into the real world and have that taken away from you. You're gonna fucking struggle. You're gonna say, "Who am I?" You're gonna say, "Where am I?" How do I talk to people? We're, we're, we're le legitimately, if we were computers, we are deprogramming ourselves through. Uh, wow. Technology. It's like the reverse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're like deprogramming ourselves. And I think that I wish I could relate. I don't, actually, I don't wish I could relate, but I wish mm -hmm. I could understand. Yeah. But I can't. And, and I see it. I see it in all these younger kids. And it's, it's scary and it's sad. And another thing we were talking about is when it comes to what they're willing to do to get out of it, right? Let's say they suffer from depression. Never, you know, when we were growing up, you know, maybe here and there you'd hear about shit, but never was like fucking, it would go from I'm upset, like we were talking about, to suicide, to fucking suicide, right? Like I'm upset, suicide, kill my, like the zero to one million yeah. in, in this generation is scary, dude. It's yeah. scary. And it's because they grew up in mass shootings. They grew up with, they are, they're so ill-equipped when it comes to social interaction and mental health. God damn it. I, w I would work day and night if I understood how I could make a difference yeah. there. You know, it's, it, it is scary. Well, and I think that that's, kind of our attempt at times here, Johnny, because we know we have a lot of younger business people that are paying attention to us is to create the awareness of if these are the type of things you got going on that you should seek help. You should be digging oh. deep to fix some of this stuff and that, you know, yeah, I agree because I, I'm constantly going back and forth on how to make sure I can, as a parent, you know, um, do my best job during all of this because it's literally an experiment and we really don't know how it turns out because, you know, I mean, I mean, my kids have been consuming it their entire life. They don't know anything different. They don't know anything like we knew as kids. No. It's completely. And on top of it, you put a quarantine on top of it. They're not even allowed to see anybody. Yeah. It, it's like a double fucking fuck you whammy. I well, mean, dude. Ho ho hopefully, hopefully when this thing is all said and done, hopefully maybe that will reverse a little bit of I, it. Maybe they will embrace their I think so. schoolmate or whatever it is, you know, a little bit more than they normally would just because it's nice to see people, you know, hope, hopefully, I feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ho hopefully that, that will come out of it. But I, I would just say to anybody who's, who's there, like, man, number one, like what's so bad? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's that bad to go to these extents? Like, yeah. what is really that bad? And if you can't answer that question, and even if you can answer that question, go fucking talk to someone, dude. The, the, the most dangerous thing you can do is isolate yourself. Yeah. You isolate yourself, man. It's a, it's a fucking time bomb. And bad shit's gonna happen. You have to talk to a friend first because if pe people, if you talk to people who care about you, they will steer you in the right direction. The worst thing you can do is keep it in. And if you're embarrassed to talk about it, I understand that. I understand that. But you will be shocked at the amount of people 
that will embrace it because for sure it, it, it because it's fucking real. Well, and uh, what I had a hard time, you know, kind of processing was like, I remember just you know trying to sh- like I was telling John there was a kid in Ohio that's like twelve years old that committed suicide off her like from his he like threw his controller at his monitor and broke it and his parents were going to be mad at him and he went and took his life and I was just like thinking like the image you know like his brain obviously couldn't process that his dad being mad at him over his monitor is not as severe as him what he what he did you know what I'm saying and I was telling my kids I mean my nine year old through my fifteen year old like I feel like in my brain I was thinking do I really have to say this to them and I thought to myself yeah, I have to tell them as mad as I would be at anything you guys could do. It's, and they hear, they've seen me go off the handle before. Like I'm, it's not worth that. Like just understand, like, and it felt weird having to reconfirm that, but I felt if I didn't and something, you know, was said or happened, happened that, and I never made them feel like that, no matter how much you're crying. Cause I was yelling at you or you think you, you know, didn't live up to something or you didn't like, it doesn't matter. Nothing's worth that. And and I just felt like I needed to say it no matter what age they were. And, you know, a couple of them are looking at me kind of crazy and AG's like, of course I wouldn't think that, but I'm like, I don't care if that's what you're telling me. I'm telling you that you need to hear this, that, you know, that's, it's not that severe, right? It's not that severe because the immature mind, especially as a kid, they can, they're not equipped to process that severity of what that really means, I don't think all the way. I, I I don't I don't think so either. And and I think that comes down to parent parenting again. You know what I'm saying? Like if you I think if you're parented uh a certain way, those things like that horrible example that you just gave horrible are are, are are, are, are not going to, going to happen. I mean, it, it, as basic and cheesy as it sounds, everything comes down to feeling, to feeling loved. I mean, it really does in, in these situations, yeah. it, it, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, um, isn't that crazy, John, that it real, that, that has so much to do with it. Even if it has you're, everything to do with everything, even if your parent, you know, just messes up all kinds of stuff, but there's a baseline of essential acceptance or love that you know is coming from them. That that literally can. There's a lot of people like that grow up and be like, I didn't even know I was poor. I mean, right, right. I mean, I've heard, how many times have you heard that? But and they don't really have any thing about. They're like, my mom loved me. She worked right, hard, and exactly. and that's that. I didn't even know I was poor until I got old and then realized how poor we was because there's nine but, kids living in the same house or they, something. They, but then they they didn't care, right? So run every situation in your head that people want, right? So okay, I want to um, be rich. Okay, if you're rich and you and you don't feel love, you're going to be depressed and miserable. No I want to fucking uh, go on this vacation. Okay, if if you, if you're not loved and 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 you go on this dream vacation, you're going to be depressed. You're not. You're not. So, oh, I want a private plane. You got a private plane. If you're if you don't feel love, you're going to be depressed. You're going to be miserable. Guess what? If you have nothing in life and you feel loved, you're going to have people. Yeah. And people are what keep people going. So, <laughs> so, 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 so everything people think they want without, without those feelings. And, and here's the crazy part is those feelings don't need to come from somebody else. You know, here's the, the harsh reality of life. We're not guaranteed that anybody is going to give us those feelings. Those True. feelings, they, they have to come from uh, ourself. Of, co- of course, other people hopefully do, right? For sure. But they can come from ourselves. But that yeah. takes a lot of that, that takes a lot of work, a lot of acceptance, a lot of understanding, a lot of everything. But without those feelings, nothing you achieve is going to be good enough. It's 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 going to be like, oh, I wanted this so bad, I'm numb. I literally, I'm numb. I can't feel it. Mm-hmm. I do that. I'm numb. N- nothing's good enough. Why? Because you don't have internal gratification. You don't have internal worth. You're not happy. You don't feel loved. Like you could have a hundred million dollars, dude. It's not going to be enough guaranteed. But if you have $5,000 and you feel those feelings, it's enough. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's fucking real right there, Johnny. Cause there's a lot of really rich, extremely unhappy, 
And, and it's easy when people uh, think that that, I don't care what any motherfucker says. I had a million bucks. I figure it out. <laughs> no, <laughs> that dude. That whole, atti- that whole attitude is going to create more problems for yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, my God. I, 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 you know, it's like you, you see it. It's like once you start um, making some money in life, whatever money it is, you know, nothing's different. Nothing's different in that. And that's what I really um, uh, like about our show is just that uh, I really hope we are communicating with people and or connecting with people uh, like we're no better than them. You know, we're just trying to share experiences and, and, and nothing's different, dude. Nothing changes. Your days aren't better. You know, th- 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 all that stuff has nothing to do with money and success. Like the, sure that that's an accomplishment, but without this, other th- this other piece, uh, the much more important piece, it's, it's all for nothing. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't fill you up the same way as those other things do. Like if I didn't feel like, um, I had value within my family system or, you know, that I didn't have relationships with the people that ma- like none of it would feel even half as good wouldn't even literally wouldn't like i have like because of those just like something like you can do for your mom johnny right there's money that you've made that has been able to afford her different either situation of living or maybe experiences whatever it is right but if you don't have that relationship and connection with her none of that really fucking matters no it it it, it doesn't matter and and it starts there and, and and it goes further because it's like okay what what fills people up what fills you up more it's like okay i'd rather be in a position where forget about the financial part where i can actually help somebody and and it doesn't have to be monetarily then um have a huge fucking war chest of of money because that stuff actually like um i think there's like a universal uh, reward and it's not like you're doing it for a reward the reward is is that you you feel good you feel a connect, like that that stuff's real so like sure balance it right balance it get give to give to people help people and, and and sure go out and do whatever you want and achieve your goals and all that stuff but don't think achieving your your fiscal goals or your career goals is going to solve anything it will not you'll tell yourself a lie you'll be in denial that that's going to solve something it doesn't solve anything if any if if anything it it can create more problems because as people are aware of it you realize that some relationships are based on nothing but what people think um you can do for them so you know it's uh it, 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 it it's a fake it's a fake prophecy people have and, um, you got to get yourself right period. Yeah. It's, um, man, I was trying to think what would be another, um, kind of, I guess thing, if somebody's watching this right now, Johnny, they've been following us. They're obviously pushing to make themselves better business. And they're like, I'm hearing what y'all are saying. Yeah. And I'm even having some success because of, let's say some of the tactics that we've helped them with. But you know what? I look in the mirror and I just, just don't like what I see. I just and and they don't know why. Because I think that's maybe a lot of it too. Like, you know, we've done a lot of probably deeper searching and things that try to uncover and and have, have taken some of this stuff head on sure. in our lives. Sure. But you know, and I've and I've mentored some young people who have come through the system, and and so have you. And you're like trying to help them kind of figure it out and no there's not one puzzle that's the same by the way no, no. <laughs> we're all completely different in the way that we operate in the way we think and the things that we value and it's yeah. like you know because the money isn't going to fix it you have to fit you have to i don't know if you fix yourself but you have to continually work on yourself to allow yourself to be happy and some people can but when you say they don't know what it is right here's my take yeah. on that i i agree with you i was trying to provoke that thought to see what you thought yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so so okay i agree with that but the only reason they don't know what it is is because they've never given the effort to figuring out, figuring that out and or they're co- they're cowards and, and and their subconscious knows what is what it is but they don't want to deal 
with the pain that comes with what it is. So uh, gotcha. if you if you don't know what it is, it ain't hard to figure it out. You know, sit in a room by yourself, sit with a professional. You'll figure it out. You'll figure the only way you're going to figure it, not figure it out, is if you want to lie to yourself to protect your your ego and to protect the fact that you are not in the mood to feel pain. And all I'll say to that is you're going to keep the pain you don't want to feel. You're going to keep keep putting out mm -hmm. on yourself and others. So you know what I'm saying. I I, I really do look at it. Cause here, like I'll be, I'll be straight. Like I had a, I, uh, I have a, I have a dad who, who it's sad. His, he, his whole life, you know, he's wasted because he hasn't done any of this stuff. You yeah. know, he's, he, he, he's heard a lot of people that, that, that would forgive him. They would forgive him, but he, but he hasn't done any of this stuff. But his egos limited his growth because he won't go there. Yeah. He won't go. He won't. He won't go there. Right. There, there's no like here when you grow up, there's, no, you, you know, just like the way we feel we need to go to school or get a job. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's no time or place that says, OK, time to work on your shit. Yeah. Right. You got to do it yourself. Word. And, and you have to look at your life and you have to be be honest and be like, shit, man. This pattern keeps repeating itself. Shit, man, I did this. I, I did this. I got to take responsibility. So if people are, if you're a repellent to people, a fucking repellent, you better look at yourself, dude, because wasting a life, wasting your whole life, you know, uh, when, 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 dude, for, listen, if, if you're dealing with good people, forgiveness is, is, you know, our backbone. You know what I'm saying? People, people forgive if you take responsibility. John, but you think you could actually forgive him if he really went there? Yeah. For really? Sure. Yeah. I mean that that that's commendable. That's yeah. that's wild because you would think that that, but it would have to be like a real deep dive on him, like really getting there. Well, listen. I mean, when when, when you when you've done things in life, you it's not up to you to say. Um, to the other person okay enough enough we've talked enough about it no 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 if you're gonna put yourself out there and and, and apologize and say listen do we got to talk about some shit you don't hit the stop button on the conversation because you did the motherfucking damage yeah. so that conversation may go on for a year it may go on for two years it may go on for two hours but it but it ain't on you if you fucked yeah. it up it's on you to listen and you should fucking listen closely because look at your life yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, and, and but that's so dependent on the person, and and I agree with that that thinking of like, man, like you you're wasting the opportunity to, you know, actually be part of the family and in, in the the proper way. And I I often thought that a little bit about my dad too. I'm like, man, there's so many things that could be fixed easily if there was an understanding or a pursuit of uncovering you know, or apologizing or, you know, talking about these things. And I, and honestly, John, if, because mine, um, I don't know, maybe wasn't as severe, I probably would have started this process process. If he was still alive to try to inch it along. I don't know if he would have reciprocated. I, I would think he might've with maybe the amount of wisdom that's happened over the last 20 years. Like, I think I could have like sparked the conversation and said, Hey man, like we need to talk about why the fuck you were doing this or why you were doing that. And let me understand, like, you know, there's some things that maybe, you know, he just never shared with anybody, but it's like, if you're not willing, if that person's not willing to go there, then they can just never really be repaired. It would have been interesting for what I know now, if I could have scooted that process along or not. I, I don't know. I, I really yeah. don't know. The, I really don't know the answer because he's passed away and I'll never get yeah. the chance, but do you ever think like if you really started that? It's like, not maybe me, it's not on me to start it. It's not. It's not yeah. on me to start it, and that's not an egotistical thing. And and here, I'll tell you, you why. Think he's, right? uh, you think he's unable to start it? Do you think he doesn't even like think Every, like that? everybody? Everybody. That is an excuse. It, it, listen, I don't have a son. He does. You do. Yeah. To to have a son that that says uh uh no more. You you could know how that feels. Oh. I don't. It would be terrible. I don't. Yeah. Um, especially if you know you got blood on your hands, right? Yeah. So it, yeah. it, 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 it's as simple as this. Like, uh, 
You it just did. gave me a feeling, and that's not even my reality. Correct. Correct. Like you just saying that to me, it put me there, and I thought, oh my gosh. So then that makes me even feel like, how the fuck did you do that? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, John. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of bad decisions, and, uh, and, and at the end of the day, here, here's the point, right? The point is, there's a lot of people who are on the receiving end uh, of bad family members, bad par bad parents, and here's what you can do: you can't beg someone to give you what you need in terms of righting or wrong. They, you can you can bring the issue up to them, and if they don't want to take responsibility you can't spend your time in years trying to make them get it see they yeah. show how much they care by hearing you out and saying wow this must be a real issue and if they're not willing to take responsibility hear you out you have a decision to make and, and this is how i made the decision i said okay here's here's the thing this is this is tragic right it, it, it's my father but but when i'm in his presence, when I'm around him, when I talk to him, how do I feel? Okay. When I'm not in his presence, when I'm not talking to him, how do I feel? And I would find that because his behavior was cyclical, it would always come to a nasty head, a nasty head. So I worked my way out by saying, I accept him. I, I accept him. I'm not angry at him. But the consequence, which is the sad part, is you're out. Straight and out. And I'm not mad. I, I'm truly not mad. But I think that I think more people, and I'm not encouraging people to break up families, but I think more people need to have the courage to say to, to kind of look at it um in a non-foggy way. Cause we, yeah. we you know, and say, what is this person? What is what are the feelings this person gives me? How do I act? How do I react when I'm around them? And then if I separate myself from them. How do I feel? I'm more at peace. My mind's more yeah. together. And, and and man, life is about making hard decisions. Hard decisions are, are are what makes you who you are. It's what molds you. And this is, you know, I'm talking about a decision that uh, I hate. I hated to make, you know, but it had to be made. It had well, because be you would have rather see humility from the other person that they want to get better and feel what every son wants to feel. But in reality is how many times could you hope for that and it just be let down? And then eventually you just always, that's what leads to not having as much self-worth for, for most people, right? Like you had things to battle it, but at the end of the day, like that's, that's what ends up de de demoralizing people. And instead you're like, you know what? 100%. I, I'm not going to continue this fucking system of just constantly being let down and making myself feel like I'm not good enough when I am fucking good enough. And if I cut this person out because they really, cause they don't really want to try, even though I, then, then I'm right. going to be happier. And that that's just, and, here, and here's the alternative, right? A lot of people probably can identify with this being around people who, who do that to you. Uh, the only way to be around them, right. Is like to play an act. Cause you can't be your fucking self. You can't, you're fucking acting, bro. You're fucking acting. Like you're not, you're not saying how you feel. You're not being yourself. You're just fucking playing the role that they want you to play there. There they are again, controlling your fucking ass. Right? So on the flip side, I can compare myself to a sibling I have who, who has not handled the way I've handled it. I'm not saying my way is better, but, um, there's still that, that, that letdown that I, that in my perception, I see often, of, oh, it's going to get better. Oh, it's going to get better, man. Fuck him, man. Fuck. It's like, bro, how long you been alive? Yeah. Like, like you're still expect, expecting it to get better? Like, uh, come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to change now. That shows you the, the, the strength, the, the strength whole. of family and the strength of what should be. People cannot get past what should be. It shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. But it is. It fucking is, bro. And, and 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 I'm sorry. And I'm sorry for myself, but I had to fucking figure it out. Yeah. Which then, John, did you feel like, and I know I, I it almost opened up a whole nother like opportunity of life once you oh, kind of absolutely it's almost like it it like 
kind of the chains are broke free essentially in a way when you make certain decisions like that, that allow then other things to grow and prosper. Well, there's enormous strength because to, to do that, and to do it with like a sound mind, right? Right? Like it's not like doing it emotionally. Like I'm fucking yeah. mad at you. Fuck off. That's yeah. that's stupid to shit. You know what I'm saying? But when you do it with a sound mind, what happens is you become as an individual, like you that is a choice here. That's a choice that your family doesn't want to see you make just because they don't not because they think you're wrong but because they, they, they don't want to see family go apart from family. So it's not really a, a decision that's embraced, number one. For sure. But, but when you stand by it and you stick through it and you know without anyone else's approval that it's right for you. There you go. Then, then you become a fucking powerhouse because then you don't look to anyone else for your life uh, decisions. Sure, you can talk to people. At the end of the day, you are self-sufficient in every way. You're so, you're emo here. You're emotionally self-sufficient for my happiness, for my emotions. For I don't rely on nobody for that. Now, now that's not to say that some like I, like I said, if somebody comes along that I end up marrying, if somebody adds to that, great. But as of fucking a handful of years ago, I rely on nobody for my happiness. It yeah. comes from me. It comes from me. And, and and that's a great feeling. Yeah. And that takes a while to get to. Yeah, John. Long fucking time, bro. Yeah. And that's why I wanted that's why I made that point is that it's not gonna happen tomorrow. Uh no, it's not gonna <laughs> no. Dude, it's a lifelong it, it's, it's a honestly, lifelong uh, it's a lifelong process. Period. Yeah. Period. I I I hope I'm a completely uh different person in 10 years for, from 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 a wisdom standpoint, you know. You really probably aspire, right? Going back to your mom, we talk about, you've talked about many times on the podcast, like your mom doesn't watch the news. She's painting in her garden, watching her, you know, watching the birds chirp and like ultimately happy or content. Is it like you aspire to get to that point by seeing a parent display it like that, Johnny? I, I see that. And for her, that's, that's happiness. Your version of that, I guess. Right my version of that and and what she's shown me is that through that like um like, like i've mentioned this before when she uh, divorced my dad in a very immature fit i said you know you're never gonna date anybody again this that and this and i can't believe that i was that selfish but i was a kid you know and mm -hmm. um she didn't want to make it any harder on me and my brother so she didn't and you know since since fucking i don't know many years she's she's just been on her own and she's the happiest person I know. So, so, if, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that cause I'm biased. It's just the truth. And she has very little by choice. And, um, what does that say about life? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it all depends on the it, inside, man. Can, nothing outside it. can do it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, of course. I, uh, but it really taught me that, 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 that your happiness is going to come from you. It's not going to come from marrying a, a, a hot wife. You know, it's not going to come from buying a bigger house. It's not going to come from uh, having another business. No, 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 dude. Get the fuck out of here. It's going to come from you getting you right. And she spent a lot of fucking years, you know, fucking, you know, dealing with shit, taking B, all this stuff. And she got herself right. And, and, and now she's getting the fruits of it. But nobody from the outside would, would view that as, as getting the fruits of happiness. But the, but the joke is on them. Yeah, that's true. Well, because once again, the outside approval doesn't matter. No. Somebody no. saying like, how could you be happy with just this? That's not for anyone else to dictate, only for that person to dictate. Yeah. That's about, what's yeah. that's what's so crazy about um I don't know. I don't know if it's just the way society's made it f made everyone feel, but it's um it's wild to think that all of that things, all of those type of really serious things are really uh di placed on how everyone else feels about them not really how you personally feel about them right right that's that that is how we are in this country um raised yeah. and it's it's society it's societal pressure and um i want everyone to fucking know that you know it, it, it's your choice to subject yourself to that measuring stick you know what i'm saying 
it, it's your choice. Even if your family does it, it's your choice. Don't like it's it, it's your choice, and 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 really try to make these decisions to live by uh, unemotionally. You know, find time to 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 make them uh, unemotionally, so you understand why you're making the decisions. Um, and, and, and then if they're right for you, you know, it, everyone knows what, what, what's right for them. Everyone knows what they feel that you could push it away all you want, but it's going to, it's going to come find you. It's, yeah. like a, it's like a fucking, it's like, it's like, it's like a, it's like a debt collector, you know, it's like a loan. Yeah. Like a fucking loan dog, shark. the bounty hunter. He's coming. Yeah. <laughs> dog, the bounty hunter with that fucking, that fucking haircut. Yep. He's coming for you. <laughs> I don't know why he's the one that popped in my mind, but that's amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up, John. I think it was good, man. Um, look, this stuff is not easy for everyone to hear um, all the time, but I think like it's necessary. Uh, people, people don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it, but it's necessary for, for true like success. Everyone's definition is so different, but reality is like inside you got to be okay. All that yeah. other stuff just adds to it. It makes life experiences fun and freedom fun. And I get all that, believe me, because I've pursued it all as has John, but None of it feels the same way when there's some serious stuff in there that you really haven't sorted through and that you don't feel like you're really worth it. And yeah, that's yeah. what I want to have this conversation today is hopefully, you know, turn some light bulbs on. Yeah. And, and what else can I say in closing is like, I, when you're saying that, it's like, I, I think about this, like anybody, you, anybody can judge, can judge me. They could take a snapshot of my life, what I'm doing. And they can judge me. They can say anything they want about me. And I promise you this, it won't affect me one bit. And it's not because the people are lesser than. It's because I am me and I accept that and I, I'm happy with it. So so a lot of people struggle with judgment in what other people say. And that can honestly, anybody, fucking anybody could say anything about me. And I'll say, okay, I don't, I really don't care. And 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 that's not being cocky. I think that's getting to a place that a lot of people should aspire to get to because then you're fucking impenetrable. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You're going to have feelings. You're going to have your own feelings, but judgment, which, which is so huge, bro, you can try to judge me. See if you get a, you will not get a response. You're not going to get a rise out of Johnny Fosco. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, but once again, you've spent years to get yourself to that point for to sure. where you feel that secure about it. For, for, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Cause who, who are you? Who are you? You don't know me. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. you. So why, why would I say about you? Why should it affect you? It shouldn't, but you're not strong enough right now to, to, to push it off. So maybe you need to go figure out how to, uh, get stronger. Yeah. Good work, Fosco. Yeah. Going sure deep can, boy. Man. Going deep, yeah. homie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good. Double right. meaning. Double meaning in the house. Yo ho. Hey, hey make hey. sure you leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Of course, share it with all your friends. Um, and you know, we'll do another Q and a coming up here on Friday. So send me. How, about, how about this? I'm, I'm going to do an impression. Okay. Uh, hang on. One second. If it's trash, turn it off. If you like it, share it out for me. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's put that shit on share Instagram. It out right? for me. <laughs> share it out for me. If it's trash, turn it off. Turn but it off. It has value. Please yeah, share it out, share it out for, for me. me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's, it's got a jingle to it, Johnny. I'm just there saying you, you yeah. can't listen. This, this confidence is in impenetrable. John. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> We're out of here. Yeah. Johnny Fosco. Gee. Can the podcast be stopped? The, the podcast, podcast can, can be stopped. Be stopped.